all the time, 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 all the time. Niggas dying, yeah, shots fired, all the time, mama's crying, yeah, homicide, all the time, all the time. Mama's crying, mama's crying, homicide, homicide. All the time, 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 all the time. Niggas dying, niggas dying, shots fired, shots fired. Mama's crying, mama's crying, homicide, homicide. All the time, all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. I like that right there. Pound South Pop, man. Uh huh. Rapid Fire, man. Check him out, man. But listen, man. We getting straight into this. This is me, 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 me. Million dollars worth of game. I go by the name of Gilly the King. Gilly the Nut. I'm Wallow267, AK Grandmaster. You know, I'm just out here doing my thing. Dojo King. That's what they call me. <laughs> they don't call you that shit. They, no, no, when I go on Dojo's, they call me that. No, I don't. When I go on Dojo's, they call me that. Like, yeah, he's a Dojo King. <laughs> just hey, D, they call me D, DK. Dojo King. They call me DK. Dojo King. Oh, all right. That's what, if, <laughs> if that's the story you run with, I'm going to run with it with you too. Cause. Listen, man, first we want to get into our sponsors. Have you had any good hair lately? Everything, DV Glam? Our sponsor, man, listen, I'm going to say this, man. I'm about tired of it, man. I'm just tired of shaving, man. I think I want some waves, man. I'd love to have some waves just for the summer. Let's go get the a whole kit. Oh, no, because you keep talking about it. You, Let's relive our people childhood. Gonna one, one, like, people going to know. Like, people going to know like that. They going to know anyway. You think if I pop up with some luxurious and glorious hair, niggas ain't going to know. know. They don't know. They probably think that we got hair. Some people might think that. No, they know you got that drop top with the tent on the side. And you can see my joint. That's why I like summertime. Summertime, it get dark, you get the tan. Nobody can tell that you got you got your brains blown. When you out. turn into Dominican low. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's 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 what they. Are you, are you Dominican? Are you Ethiopian? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it depends how I'm feeling. If I how I respond to that. So you want to get into um, this main Osborne for games? No, let's get into it, man. Okay, the first thing we're gonna talk about. It's the DJs. Did, 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 you know what? I ain't gonna talk about that. Because this. no, you know what? You know what? Because a lot of people always put it on the rappers. Oh, they fucked the music up. Oh, oh the, what rappers? The, the, the new the newer generation. No, 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 no. They, uh, that's they, what they do. No, they can't do. But that. what I'm saying, that's what they do. They don't like to respect the youngins' craft listen to everything. and what they do. And they say, oh, the youngins, they fucked the they fucked the music up. Oh, the South fucked the music up because no, the South got everybody trying to sound like them. Let me tell you something. If y'all want to blame it on the rappers, let's blame it on the DJs too. How you gonna blame it on the DJs? Because let me tell you something. At one point, a DJ's job was to chase records. They took pride yeah. in that shit. Breaking that record. Breaking that. Breaking the record. Yeah, that was like- we didn't have the internet. We didn't have none of that. So a DJ had to be in tune with what was going on in the streets. Yeah. Then the 2000s came. And, and I'm going to keep it all the way real. You want to know a DJ that's played a big part in Fucking the music industry up. Who? DJ Clue. How? Because DJ Clue went and got a rapper. And then he showed all these other DJs that you don't have to just be confined to getting your little DJ at the club checks. And if you work at the radio, your little radio checks. Yeah. You you could you could get this money outside of the radio. Clue ran with the, the bag. rapper. And, and I, I can see why he... He influenced a lot. He ran that bag up. He ran that bag up. That's and, then, and then what happened? Every goddamn DJ in the country was trying to get a rapper. Was trying to put a rap on. So now, them DJs wasn't concerned with chasing no goddamn records no more. And why should I play? Why should I play you if you from the city and my I got a I got and my own artist? I got my own artist. All I I'm concerned about I is it. It. playing my own artist and trying to live this rapper's life. Because the rapper life, let's be real. Is way better than the DJ life. The DJ ain't got five women wrestling over his dick at the Four Seasons. Let's just keep it real. Until DJ Clue came around, pretty sure DJ Clue had a, a lot of those sessions. You feel what I'm saying? He running around here with Hove and Fabulous and this person and that person, and he making money off the books. For real, for real, you ain't like some DJs. You ain't even know. Like you ain't even know before the internet came. You ain't even know what a DJ looked like. Absolutely, they wasn't putting them in. They wasn't putting them in rap pages. They wasn't having them in murder dog. They wasn't having them in the source to access. They ain't having none of them joints. Right, and then the two thousand showed up, and all the DJs tried to get rappers. Try either they tried to put their own album out. Yeah, it was a lot of DJs. Okay, out. so now 
when you hit the airwaves. That was legendary though for a DJ to sign a, a record deal. Absolutely, that was legendary. absolutely. And it's, I'm not saying that they was at fault in anything. I'm just saying they helped fuck the music industry up too because because at the end of the day, if you a DJ and you about to go on the radio at eight o'clock. Whose music is you going to put in that motherfucking slot? Because you got to you got to play the big you got to play all the big artists. They right. already on the list. And then you're going to throw yours you in. You slide somebody in locally or a couple spots, you're going to put your artists in there. Or you going to put you going to represent your album on there. Yep. You ain't worrying about it's no longer you worrying about breaking other artists, looking for the hot records, uh being in tune with what's going on in the streets. No. Your number one concern when you come to work is Pushing your album or pushing your artist. So now shit gets watered down because now the streets are saying, oh, he pushing such and such and such and such, but he ain't even really that hot. But we got my man over here. That's bubbling who, for real. That's bubbling for real. Got who's his- not getting no look because at the end of the day, what is the DJ trying to do? He's trying to get that rapper money. Mm-hmm. He's trying to get them dick sucks. He's trying to get that Rolex. He's trying to get whatever the name of his company is. Fuck your rapper, I'll play my rapper. He's trying to get one of those chains. You hear me? There was trying to live the life. You're right. Cause That's it, why, till this day, then right. the internet came along, Gmail came along, everybody. Now, DJs ain't chasing records. They waiting for that motherfucker to go through their email. Let me see if I like this. Nah, I don't really like this. Why would I, you, I like this? Why do you chase the records when they come to you though now? Because at the end Technology of the day, the game. because at the end of the day, you still want to be well. I don't know about the DJs of today, but back then they still wanted to be the the person that took the re, the responsibility of I played this record first. See, now that shit really don't mean back nothing. in the day a DJ would pull up in the studio. Absolutely. At your session. Absolutely. They was at them sessions, some legendary no D- sessions. You know when the DJ come into the studio now? If you Drake, if you Meek Mills, if you Fabulous, if you Migos, if you uh the baby. See, now you got to be up here for them to visit the studios. Cardi B. The, let's be Cardi B. Because let's be for real. The DJs done got too fucking important. Now, real quick. You think some of the DJs was trying to maybe restore the balance? Because you know when hip hop first started, it, it was, was DJ. Eric B and Rakim. Yeah, it was, it a was DJ, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh, Fresh Prince. Prince. So for a while, the, the DJ kind of did take on a different role. Do you think by any chance that maybe some of them was like, man, it's time to try to get the, the DJ back on top? Fuck no. And I'm going to tell you bag. why. I'm going to tell you why. Because the DJs were setting up their own companies. You feel me? Oh, hold on. What's wrong so, with that? Is there anything wrong I'm not, with that? I'm not, I'm not saying nothing's wrong with that, but I'm saying it. What I'm saying is if you're setting up your own company and you go and get a rapper to be on your company, then you're low key trying to be Puff now. You're trying to be Jay Z. You're trying to be uh, Russell Simmons. You're trying to be the executive. Let's be for real. A lot of them wasn't even built to be executives. They was built to be exactly what the fuck they are, DJs. So now you're coming into a game where you know little about the business, but you're learning as you go. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what they did. What I'm saying is they have to take credit for fucking the game up too. That's all I'm saying. Because at the end of the day, all of them had rappers. And once you get something that you solely got to focus on, you're not focusing on all the other shit. Mm-mm. So you know how many rappers that was really hot that came and went and never got their opportunity? Because I, I got to focus on him right now because this is my money. You feel what I'm saying? If, if, I'm, if, I'm, a, uh, if I'm a commentator, right? And I commentate for the NBA. Am I focusing on football? Am I focusing on soccer? Uh, No, they don't fucking pay me. The NBA pays me. Right? So that was the mindset that the DJs took. All of them ran around, set their companies up, got a rapper. And now they was like, "Mm, I'm focusing on him. I'm not. And then you got to look at it like this. If. He, if I'm focusing on my artist 
and this artist coming up and he's hot and he's my artist competition. Block him. Um, block him. Uh, the can be my tumble. Don't bring that shit in here, Muda for guy. Don't bring that record up to this to this radio station, Muda for guy, because you getting on is taking a shot away from my artist getting on. That's how they was approaching exactly. the game. Exactly. That's how they was approaching the game. So even if they didn't necessarily block you out of that was their mindset, but that's what they did subconsciously. So you had so many rappers that couldn't get on because DJs, you got these DJs that's at these major stations. And let's be for real, back in the 2000s, radio was everything. If you was bubbling out of Philly, what did the record label do? They called down to Cosmic Kev and said, Cosmic Kev, what's up with uh, Meek Mills? Is he, he's, is he really bubbling like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he popping out here. You playing him? Absolutely, I'm playing him. You know how many calls Cosmic Kev got like that? You know how many calls Funkmaster Flex got like that? DJ Clue, Reg out in Connecticut, all these places, Greg Street in Atlanta. Greg, you heard of uh, Bobby, Bobby, uh, Bobby Johnson, yeah, yeah, he he Johnny, popping out here. Johnny Donut, Johnny Donut, yeah, he popping out here. Yeah, he got a record out here. Yeah, that joint moving. You playing it? Yeah, I'm playing it. That's how record labels would 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 check the temperature on a rapper because they like if that nigga's popping in Philadelphia like he just said he was in his office, Cosmic Kev would be playing him. So let let's get the confirmation. Kev, are you playing him? Yeah, he popping. Yeah, he doing this thing. All right, cool. We could do business with him because he done passed point A. He's already at point C before he walked into this office. But then when all the DJs started to get artists, that shit went out the window, man. That shit went all the way out the window, man. So I just want the DJs to accept responsibility for fucking the game up, too. Because they always want to oh, say well, the you new. Say it too. You say it, too. Who else fucked uh, the no, game No, I'm up? just saying. You trying to say, too. Th- because when I talk to DJs, they always say, uh, the newer generation, they ain't talking about nothing. They ain't I don't agree with them. But it's I not do about, talk it's to, not about. But I do talk to a lot of DJs who say, and I have over the time, over all of these years, man, the music industry watered down. Uh, What's watered down? What is they talking about? That's what they say. About what? What, what okay, do they mean? Okay, you know how I was watered down because you got a lot of one hit wonders. You got a lot of you got a lot of these artists who uh they do something on the internet, they get popping real quick, they get a song real quick. Song might not even be hot. It might just be lukewarm, but because you're popping at the time, we can run with it, you can make some money, and then you're out of here. But who's to say if the song hot? I I mean, the people determine that. That's what, what I'm saying. So we can't say But listen, okay, prime example. Gold all in my chain. Gold all in my ranks. Gold all in my watch. That nigga can't get $800 to perform no fucking way right now. Yeah, but they had songs like, I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. They always had a one-hit wonder, dude. That's a part of the game, though. Listen, but listen, they didn't have so many of them is the point. See, now, now, when that song came out, it didn't have no gimmick around it. It was actually a hot song. This nigga was walking through the goddamn projects with a dog like this, go, don't believe me, just what, nigga, 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 looking like Martin, looking like goddamn, what's the nigga on Martin? Romy Rome. He looking like Romy Rome and shit. You feel what I'm saying? So people wasn't really focusing on how hot the record was. They was focusing on the look and the whole gimmick, and it was funny to motherfuckers. So then as as it catch your attention on being some funny, goofy shit, after you hear it 100,000 fucking times, then you psych the fuck out. But let me ask you a question. You hear anybody playing that motherfucking record today? No. That's my point. It, it's still motherfuckers till this day that are gumping their car some old heads. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I, I was know. a baller. No, I no, a, no, you out of yes, it is. No, it ain't. Yes, no, it, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. No, it ain't. Because that was an organic. Let me tell you something about organic, man. It always beats that bullshit that come with the with the glitter and the and and, and, and it's like it fucks your brain up. That shit was organic. There's a bunch of one-hit wonders that was organic that you still will play their song. 
them niggas, that niggas not getting three hundred and fifty dollars to perform no fucking way right you just now. You said eight hundred. You might get three hundred fifty dollars. You nigga ain't getting three fifty to perform no way because it wasn't organic, man. And shout out to him because he came in, he not made his bad. bag real quick. I, I ain't hating. I'm just speaking what the facts is. You feel what I'm saying? Organic. Let me let me let me give you a prime example of organic. When Drake and Meek Mills was going through it, right? Drake dropped that bomb on Meek, right? Niggas was in the studio saying, I don't know, man. It might be over for Meek, man. I don't know. I'm telling you, dog. Yeah, niggas ain't feeling him right now. It might be over. And I sat there and told niggas it'll never be over for Meek Mills. You know why? Because niggas love Meek Mills when a nigga didn't have a coin in his fucking pocket and he had some goddamn straight back braids to the back that was raggedier than a motherfucker. It looked like he never got them bitches done. That's organic. Yeah, the people love him for real. That's organic. That's yeah, what, I think that's that, different than like some of them songs that was back in the day, bro, to be honest. That these songs was pushed out by the label. Because remember, us growing up, we ain't have no, no option but with the radio or what MTV gave us. You know what I'm saying? So some of that stuff was too. budget. Yeah, it was budgeted from the record label and given to us too. So we did have organic and non-organic stuff back then too. You know what I mean? We did. Not to the level that we got it yeah, right now. Yeah, now it's a wild, wild right, west. Right now, somebody could... Shit in a bowl, put whipped cream in it, fucking cherry on it, and call it a shit, a diarrhea shit Sunday, and eat that motherfucker, and he's gonna have a million five followers tomorrow for eating shit. Them kids couldn't do that that put that record out. But you, but you gotta understand this at the end of the day, it's like we living in a time which is great because a lot of people say, fuck the DJ. Cause they feel as though they don't need them because they got the internet. Why right. do I need a DJ when I got SoundCloud? Right. Why do I? Need, because at the end of the day, we're we're in a place now where as though you can say like Nipsey was saying, "Fuck the middleman," and you can put your own stuff out, and you can have the people. The people is the people is putting the people in position. See, the roots hold up the tree. The bottom dictate the top, and that's what's going on. The people when you put your stuff on SoundCloud mm -hmm. and you put your stuff on YouTube and you start popping, the people are saying they like that. So it could be it could be you know. BS to billions of people, but it's, it don't it don't take billions of people to get some traction. All you need is a couple hundred thousand, and you popping out here, and it's a couple hundred thousand that's going to like your stuff no matter what you put out. Right. And and my point you just gotta is, connect with them. The DJs downgraded their significance in the game. Yeah, that's why when the internet came out, and motherfucker seen, you know what? Fuck them niggas. Yeah, I ain't gotta go through them niggas no more. I ain't got to go. That's because niggas was tired of. You think motherfuckers were looking back saying, I want to say some names, but I ain't going to say no names. Man, that DJ got that rapper right there. Man, that nigga ain't shit. Everybody, everybody know I'm hotter than this nigga, but I can't get that motherfucking DJ to play nothing of mine, man. I'm hotter than this nigga on the streets right now. I can't get that DJ to play nothing of mine because... Um, his artist competition. Do the radio matter? Right now. So do do artists really get care about getting played on the radio? I mean, in 2019, yeah, if you're an artist, you still your dream is still to get played on the radio, without a doubt. Do people listen to radio? Um, yes, because if nobody listened to radio, then radio would have been folded. They would have been tapped out. You feel what I'm saying? So as an artist, it's still no feeling like when you hear your record come across that radio for the first time. I don't give a fuck who he is. You can try to lie. You can try to bullshit. But when you hear your song come across that radio for the first time and you and your homies wherever y'all at and y'all snapping, y'all losing your mind, y'all like, you did it, nigga. It's still a certain feeling, man, when you come across that airwaves, man. Granted, the DJs downgraded that. They downgraded their significance because they all took on the artists. All of them. I think that feeling that you had... I think that feeling that you're saying about that you you speaking about getting your stuff played on the radio. I think that's the new feeling is not really getting played stuff on the radio, getting a repost from somebody that's big. I think that's that feeling now. I think I think it took that. It is. Be, be, that's that feeling it now. Because because if I'm an artist, that's one of the feelings. If if, if 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 I'm a rapper and I'm coming up and somebody big reposts me, I think that's that's more of an impact than me getting played in my little town or my city. So it's like oh. But you got to understand, you got to understand, most artists want to be the man where they're from. Yeah, and that's it sometimes. That's it. I, I mean, mean, motherfuckers walk up on us, yo, I'm the hottest nigga in Philly, and we like, mm. It's a big world. You talking about Philly? You talking about Philadelphia? 
okay, youngin. That's the mindset that a lot of a lot not and and the artists who don't have that mindset a lot of times be the artists that make it out. Because they, they don't fuck, they don't program their mind to just think about a 200 block radius. See, a lot of times when you just thinking about, oh, I'm the hottest nigga in West Philly, you making music for West Philly. Mm-hmm. I'm the hottest nigga in North Philly, you making music for North Philly. Is a nigga in New Orleans going to want to listen to this? Is a nigga in Atlanta going to want to listen to this? Chicago, sound. Milwaukee, St. Louis. So are you making music for South Philly or is you making music for the world? But you got to remember this. Whatever whatever town you from, you got to make your sound. You, you, you talk about it all the time. So sometimes your sound might sound like Philadelphia. Your sound might sound like, you know, the south side of Chicago. Your sound might sound like Bankhead, but that's what people look for. Right. They looking for your sound. They want they want a sound that you, you know, from your from your place on this world. They want they only they already know they sound. They know the people to listen to from their town. Oh, right. yeah, that's, that's that's Bankhead Mike. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. if you from Philly, they want that Philly sound. Right. You from New York, they want the New York sound. And I think this is why the South is so powerful in the history of hip hop is because you never seen, like even when New York had the crown, you never seen a place where as though everybody is trying to mimic their sound around the country. Mm-hmm. People that rap like in Houston, they rap like, you know, boys from Texas. People that rapped in Compton, they rap like Compton. You know, Philly rap like Philly. New York rap like New York. No, Philly don't rap like Philly no, no more. No, I ain't. Listen, whatever you say, I'm just talking about, I'm talking about as it went before. Yeah. And then you'll have Andre and them, down, down Andre 3000 and all of them. you had Luke down, down Miami rapping the way they rap. Right. Now, the South is so powerful that I don't care where you, you can hear somebody's music. You don't know. Where you from? You don't know if they from Chicago. You don't Can't know if they identify from, with them. You don't know if they from New York. I, you know, I didn't hear dudes in New York sound like they from down Bankhead. Right. I, me, uh, every every time I'm in the studio, a young boy say, "Let me let you hear some music, Gilly. Throw it on." Hey, how about the Hey, how about the Hey, how about the fuck are you from? West Philly. Oh, that's the sound of West Philly. Mm, no, you sound like the bootleg Migos. You sound like Cheetos, nigga. Get the fuck out of here with this. How about the dip the bur? Hey, how about the dip the bur? Hey, and the ad lips be like, ya, ya, how about the dip the fry, fry, how about the dip the, ooh, ooh, how about the, get the fuck out of here, man. Where you from, man? Let me tell you something. When Atlanta niggas put a Philadelphia nigga on, guess what they wanna hear? A Philadelphia nigga. Right? I, they don't wanna hear bootleg Atlanta nigga, but see, you know why niggas don't understand that? Because niggas don't never go to Atlanta. So they don't understand that they got uh, 132 rappers, 132,000 rappers down there that's rapping like that down there alone. And then you go in and you say, let me let you hear some shit. Where you from? I'm from Philly. They think they're ready to hear some shit that sounds like Gilly, Beanie, Meek Mills, Freeway. Even Will Smith, you should have seen the people dancing and shaking and moving and jumping and spinning and clapping. By the beat, I was grooving and screaming and yelling and on the microphone, I was flowing. Ain't no, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. Whoa, whoa. But we live in, bah, listen, bah. listen, listen. No. We living in a world, we living in a world of, of everybody want to be lit. Everybody want to be important. Nobody. Right. So you got to understand now, now it's just about, I want it right now. Oh, that worked for them? It's going to work for me. No, it's everybody, not. Everybody, listen, what? Is you kidding me? Everybody is mimicking anybody. No, I said, I said nobody that just because it's working for a motherfucker that's from another place that you're from don't mean it's gonna work from you. Because that's what I'm saying. Because, but no, but, but that's that's the mindset of people. Because Absolutely. We live in a place like I always say, where everybody do what everybody do. Absolutely. But the only people who's gonna win is the people that just jump off the bridge first. You're not gonna be able to. I, I, I don't see too many of that happening where people is able to mimic somebody else's situation. But that's the the world we living in is now is I want to be lit. I want to be popular. I don't want no money. I just want people to know me. Mm-hmm. Wow, I want to be important. Important nobodies. That's the whole thing. For instance, I'm not saying, I, I don't want, I, I just want to speak on the thing. You have people out here on social media, a bunch of people following, but they're not making no money. Right. They're just on there to be on there. You had the one girl which just came up, you know, uh, I think her name is Ari, A R I I. She was on social media, had like 2.6 million followers. She couldn't sell 50 products. Because people ain't, people not um, um, following her for selling products. They following her probably for the way she look. 
You know what she could have sold? What? Some of that pussy. Oh, we're not, we're not, I'm uh, just saying. We're not promoting I'm, prostitution. I'm, I'm just selling, saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Not, there's a lot of women out here that, oh, they, they might got 1.6 million followers. They might got uh, 4 million followers. But at the end of the day, most of them got that many followers because you uh, advertising your ass and not your class. If you take all the ass shots down, all the shots of them in bikinis, all the shots of them with their puppies sitting up on the fence <laughs> trying to hop the gate. And you just put up all face pics, them bitches' followers would go from 4 million to 40,000. Because them bitches is quick to flash you that donkey and not that fucking monkey. So, uh, let's be for real. You know how many women I follow because the ass popped up on my drink? God damn. I but, see, but see, my whole thing, why are you talking from that place if you, 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 you tapped in, you tuned in? Because what, what, okay, what man don't want to see a nice ass? Don't want to see a nice round bubble. Well, what you care that, but the way you just spoke, like you. At the end of the day, I'm speaking the facts. I I only push follow too because I seen the ass. Like if the bitch would, if the bitch would get get got all mug shots from the neck up, she, my fuckers would start unfollowing. Ah, uh, bitch look like Caesar. Go, fuck is wrong with you? But but it goes back to this. It goes back to this. We living in a world of important nobodies, and everybody want to be important nobody. Whereas though you're not you're not selling nothing, you're not trying to make nothing, you just want to be popping. So I don't care what you're doing, him doing, and he doing. I want to do it. Let me do it. I want to get popping. Ah, right. Everything is about getting popping right now, being lit right now. I just started rapping yesterday. Post me. I'm trying to pop everything. I'm selling here. I'm doing whatever. Everything is about mimicking somebody else. Right. The people that's going to win is going to be the people that's going to do some shit that nobody else is thinking about. Right. Go find their own thing. Do some research. Oh, damn. They ain't got that. Let me fill a void in the marketplace. That's the stuff that always explodes. Avoid in the marketplace. Insta Instagram came and said, "You know what? Let's make this shit as simple and dumb as simple and dumbed down as possible. Picture, video. This before picture, picture, and it's gonna be simple. Right. And that's what people like: simplicity. And it's just, it's just crazy though. Everybody wants to ride everybody else's wave. That they love it. Get your surfboard. So look how many niggas running around here talking about. We give. I'm gonna give y'all some game. I'm gonna give y'all free game. I'm a. But them niggas don't get the traction I get. You know why? Because everybody's like, mm, that's Gilly shit. Um, you're a bootleg Gilly. You're BLG. So let's be for real. I got, I got me alone. I got 800 niggas on the internet trying to, trying to mimic what I do. You, you might have inspired them. But I don't think uh, they probably mimic it. No, they trying to mimic. They talk about free game. If my shit is called million dollars worth of game for free and you say I'm giving out free game, you're fucking mimicking me. You trying to do what I do. But the fact is your mouthpiece ain't as luxurious and glorious as mine's. I call it what I see it. Okay. Fuck it. Now, I ain't going to put a nigga on front street. I'm going to let a nigga I don't, live. I don't put it like that because. I'm going to let a nigga live. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even see it. Like, I see that you can inspire people to try to. Do what you do. Okay, let them. me tell you something. If you inspire a motherfucker, then they supposed to name they shit something else. Boss talk. Or 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 something else. How you just gonna take the exact same fucking words that I use and say you not mimicking what I do? Okay, so if you put out an album called Walito Sway, and a nigga named Carl put out an album called Carl Lito Sway, what the fuck that ain't mimicking? You inspired him? No, he's a professional dick holster. A lot of people like to mimic somebody. Like I, I know it's somebody that you, right. I, I did, listen. We going we gonna cut to the chase because I know you, you always talking this, but you, you like to mimic people when you did it before because you use people that you. Who would you be? Deion Sanders, Bo Jackson, Sammy Sosa. Three baseball players, and you know football, well, two football, of them was football, football players slash too. baseball players. Who would you be? You said Bo Jackson, Deion Sanders, or Sammy Sosa. Yeah. It's, that ain't even close. Why ain't it? I would have to be the legend. The GOAT. Deion Sanders. By far. Easy. Because Deion Sanders had the same type of swag as a nigga. He, he didn't give a fuck, and he spoke his mind. Deion Sanders, a thief. He stole that song off me. Must be the money. I wrote that song. 
Yeah. You ain't write that shit. I didn't write that song. I wrote a song <laughs> similar to that song, and he bit it off. <laughs> what was the name of your Must shit? Must be the honey. These chicks is on me. Get the fuck out of here. Must be the honey. They give it to me free. <laughs> that was my song. He stole it from me, and I had a Jerry Curl on chains, and I was playing football at the time. He's a thief. <laughs> Let me just say this, right? Deion's a thief. Let me just say this. Bo Jackson is definitely a legend, but Bo Jackson's career wasn't that long. That's what people don't talk about. Bo Jackson about. was a monster. But his career was he, not that long. All right, all right. And then I definitely wouldn't be Sammy Sosa because that nigga went from chocolate milk to goddamn skin milk. That nigga cut his head off and put it in a motherfucking uh, washing machine with three gallons of goddamn Clorox bleach, man. But listen, I'm listen. definitely not ever claiming listen, that nigga. First of all, first of all, you got to say this. Let, let me explain some of this. It's hard being black. First of all, you think they don't still look at Sammy Sosa as a black man? I'm just saying, man. He he probably thought he could blend in. Blend in? He that thought he was just going to blend. He thought he was going to be able to. Oh, damn. I, I could blend. That nigga you know the same what? color as Crazy listen, Glue, man. I wanted to get his whole body done up like that. You got to get your whole body <laughs> dipped. <laughs> of course. Because if you on a beach and you got a light skin and you got a white head, you can't have a, a black body. Yeah, I wonder he had to. He had to get dipped. So he threw his whole, yeah, he, that nigga Sammy got, dipped in, got, that got, nigga got dipped. dipped in vanilla chocolate. <laughs> he said, I'm getting dipped. I got to, he, listen, he said, if I could get dipped, I could dip from the brothers. <laughs> that nigga got dipped in vanilla chocolate. Man. Even though he Latino, I, he's still dark. So, you, you know, you getting the same thing. All the Latinos mad as shit. When they listen. seen that shit, they was like, my God, so far as you at the end of the day, Sammy Sosa said, "If I get dipped, I can dip." He said, "This mighty gone." <laughs> but 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 think about this. Who, if I get listen, dipped, I can dip. <laughs> just listen. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. It's cool. It's cool. Let me tell you something. At the end of the day, don't nobody want to. It's sad, but ain't nobody trying to be black. Shit. At the end of the day, at the end of, no no, it's cool to act black, but being black and going through the struggles that black people got to go through. Going through that? No, it's cool. It's cool to mimic their culture, but no, no, I'll mimic the culture, but I ain't dealing with the struggle that come with that. I'm not dealing with that. See, see that? Now, that, that's what we're talking about. Okay, now, now I could agree with you with Sammy Sosa if Sammy Sosa did that shit at 14. Sammy Sosa got dipped and dipped after this nigga got millions of dollars, man. So. It, it, he was way out to struggle before I didn't even, he got I didn't dipped even in vanilla chocolate. Once he got dipped, I ain't even recognize right. him. Right. So his dip, the dip worked. Once he got dipped and he dipped, because because when I seen him, I was like, no, they ain't. Somebody I mean, Michael Sammy. Jackson like, no. got dipped. Oh, oh, oh don't, don't talk about Mike. Don't do that. Uh, listen, can't I'm, talk about I'm Mike. speaking on facts. Like, like, you can't speak on Mike. You can't speak on Mike. But Mike got dipped too. We can't speak on Mike. I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to feel like I'm being biased. But don't speak on Mike. Don't do that. Hold on. I speak on whoever the fuck I want. I'm just saying that's Mike. That's Mike. Mike got dipped too. Mike was off white too, like he got the snakes. You are not alone. Mike should have got. Come on, man, don't speak on Sammy Mike, man. Sosa don't do that. Had to put one of them goddamn orange joints around his neck that's on the snakes. That nigga's off white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vir you know what, Virgil? I think him and Virgil, uh, Virgil Abloh probably dipped him. Who the fuck is that? That's who cre created off white. You nut, Virgil Abloh. Oh, he I probably, didn't know that. He probably got dipped. Yup, he probably dipped him. He off white. Hey, listen, they need to start selling the off whites. Sammy Sosa editions. The jerseys and all of the all For white. For real, everything's off white. Got a little dirt tint to it, but it's like white, white with a little dirty yeah, tint. Yeah, that's, that's deep. That's deep. The Sammy Sosa editions. <laughs> oh, because listen, I, I didn't respect it when Mike did it. I'm just keeping it real. I'm, I'm like, not going to speak on Mike. I don't want to be I'm biased, like, but Mike. You, 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 there's certain people, listen. There's certain people, like, that, listen. Even certain, when you get dipped, you still got that little dirty black tint to you. You feel listen, what I'm saying? Let me so you're you not really white. In the culture, like, and listen, you listen, tan listen, and listen. shit. You like I'm cocaine. Gonna I'm going to just say this. Like, in the black like culture, crack cocaine and shit. In like. the black culture, there's certain people that you just can't speak about. Listen, hope. Let me okay. run the list down. Okay. Michael Jackson. I just spoke on him. Listen, Muhammad Ali, Prince. Michael Jackson, Muhammad Ali, Prince, James Brown, Martin Luther King. Uh, Fuck you, mean. Oh, hold shut up, shut up, me, shut up. I, let, 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 hold, let me, let me. James let me, Brown was a legend. Hold, Martin Luther let, let King. Let me hold, hold, hold I ain't finished. I ain't finished. Okay. Martin Luther King, Karate Earl, Bruce Lee. There's certain people you can't speak on. All right. For one thing's for sure. Two things for certain. And, Mar and I, Martin Luther King was a legend. But Martin Luther King was on some nut shit. 
All right, but listen, we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to disrespect nobody like that. We ain't disrespect, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm going to say that. I'm, don't do that. Don't do that. Because you, 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 got, you got Earl name dirty out here. Don't mess it up. Fuck and you know what's crazy? No, this Earl crazy. got his own name no, dirty. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Nuh-uh. Uh-uh. I, I talked to my mom. She going she gonna to make, make a public announcement that stuff she said, she going she gonna to take that what? back. Because she told, she said Earl was tricking. She's going to take that back. She, she, she said she, missed, she, she had him mixed up with somebody else. But listen. No, she did. Yes, yeah, she did. Listen, listen. I just had a dream. Listen, unbelievable dream two days ago about Earl. It was, it was listen. I was mad. Listen, I was mad as shit. April woke me up. Baby woke me up. Baby, you got to go. You got to go. I said, yo, what is you? I was pissed. I was so, listen, I was pissed when she she shook me and woke me up. Because guess what? I come out of nanny house. I'm doing my, minding my business. la di da di da di da I'm whistling and walking and all that. I walk on a corner. Like, it was a corner. It was like the sun was beaming down. So when I walked to go around the corner store, it was like it was a glow coming from the, the the corner store. I look as I got closer. It was Karate Euro. Listen, listen, listen. It was Karate Euro and James Brown together. Yeah, they was drinking the ICF Ice Cold Forty. So let me ask you a question. Hold on. So if, if I'm telling, I was I was done. Karate Euro be in your dreams. He's a legend. This is my sensei. But listen, people I think have Karate Euro people touched have, you, man. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Don't say that. I think he people touched have, you. Stop slandering. I'm telling you, stop slandering. Stop slanting for you being in this hospital, emergency division. Now listen, this is what happened. What, what, what had me messed up, and I never knew, I never knew this, and, and this stuff is starting to come out to me in my dreams. So when I go up to him, I'm walking up, I'm a little distant. Karate Arrow had a J in his hand. He was smoking some J, him and him, and, him, and, him James Brown, they passing the J back to forth. I'm like, and he seen me, and when he seen me, he was like, student, what, what was, how you, what's going on? I'm like, sensei. He like, go back, go back around the corner. I said, no, we, we must talk. I mean, what's, what's, what's going on? And, and what's next? Nigga, give me that. Give me that right here. James Brown snatched the little, the little reefer. Jay from him starts smoking it. I mean, and he just starts tweaking out. I don't know if it, I don't, I'm not sure if it was a turbo, a ramp. You know, they got the Rambo too, where it's weed, wet, dope, everything in there. I don't, I don't know what it was. It was a regular J or it was something else. It might have been laced. I think this joint <laughs> was laced. Because listen, 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 because listen. <laughs> James Brown smoked it. I got that feeling. I said, oh, what the hell's going on? <laughs> so hold on. So, so you seen James Brown and Karate Earl in your dreams yeah. chilling on, and you was more concerned with Karate Earl than the legend James Brown? You was more concerned with a nigga who got all his pussy for free. James Brown, you was more concerned about a nigga that buys crackhead pussy There's over no, a nigga that got all his pussy slander. for that's free? That's slander. There's no truth to that. But but James Brown, he's they on the same like level. It's cool. They legends in the ghetto. That's all they are. They legends in the ghetto. No, James Brown's a legend all across the world, not just in the fucking ghetto. No, but he's they legends. Karate Earls is a legend in a three block radius. No, no, Allegheny. Allegheny is the no, only place no, where I no, go and niggas no, like, yo, girl, for real though, Karate Earl was a no, fucking no, legend. No, only no, around no, here no. to y'all niggas. No, no, Martial Karate Arts. Karate Earl would have came up Air no, Ave. No. Nobody would have known they had Martial, shot him right out Martial that fucking gate. Martial Arts is globally respected, so Karate Earl is globally respected. He represents the arts. But what I'm saying is, what happened is, so listen, right there, when Earl, Earl kept telling me, go, go back around the corner, student, and the next thing you know, Abel shake me, woke me up, messed the whole dream up. Messed the whole dream up. I ain't see Earl in years. In years. Earl died when I was in jail, man. Do you know how it was when I got the information Speaking that Earl- Speaking of jail, man, let's go to stories from a cell, man. Stories from a cell is deep. And I'm going to go back to what you was talking about, about being black, and why people don't want to be black. Like Sammy Sosa? Yeah, like Sammy. He got dipped. He wants to be a- d- Off-white. Off-white. But Off I will, white Sosa. Listen, I will say this. I will say this. Off white Sosa, raw reason rovers, in and then pull over, and then and then over. Off white Sosa. <laughs> he need to remix that joint. Yeah, that Sammy. Yeah. yeah, that'd be crazy. Sammy, damn, that would be deep. <laughs> and then he got an off white sneakers on in the video and all that, the, 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 the jacket and all that. But Dick, do you know what's deep? Nobody want to be black. See, see, people want to act black. People want to. Live the black, but it's hard. That that shit is dangerous. It is. It's hard being black. For instance, stories from a cell. I didn't. I got it. It, it just. It was. It. First of all, Ava D. I want to give you a shout out. I, I like to remix people' name. I like to say nickname. That's who directed. You know what I mean? When they see us, when they see us, Netflix. What is that? Unbelievable story. It's a movie or something? No, 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 no. It's a series. This is what I told you to a watch. Series. Right? Yeah, I told you. What's the name of it? To, when they see us, I told you and Gina. When they to, see us, I told you and Gina to watch this. But stories from a cell. It's interesting about me personally. I came up in the juvenile system. For those that don't know, I first got locked up when I was 11 years old. 
spent five years in the juvenile system when spending 20 years in prison. What I've seen on When They See Us is something that I've seen happen when I was certified as an adult. 17, I got certified as an adult, two armed robberies, two firearm charges. I got sentenced to 19 and a half to 52 years. So just for the people, before you go any further, you did 20 years, you came home in 2017. Yes. Just, I'm going to let you get right to your story. When did you get off parole? October 29th, 2048. 2048. Yeah. Okay. So so what happened is this. This is what happened. Everything that happened to them with them getting railroaded, with them not properly, properly, a lot of them didn't even get read the Miranda rights. That was never even read. They was These kids didn't even know what Miranda rights kids was. kids was it? It was five kids. And what Central happened? Park. Can you tell me the story? Well, a woman got raped. These kids was in the park, and they just started picking up kids. That you know, they felt that was in the park. Someone wasn't even in the park. They picked them up. Oh, we got to get them. You have an overzealous district attorney that's building their rep up because that's what happened a lot of times. A lot of times, these district attorneys they chasing convictions because what the convictions is once they build their rep off with a lot of convictions, they get they get the rep, they get all the connects in the district attorney's office, and they go into private practice defense attorneys, and they big time now. A lot of times they be big time. You like, damn, I want them to represent me because they got all the connects and they ain't no joke. They highly respected. So so they build they they will. They will mess your life up just to get a conviction, even if it's inconsistencies within the evidence, inconsistencies within the statements. This is what's going on in the crown across the country in America. Inconsistencies. And it's like you there, you don't have a proper representation because you live in the ghetto. A lot of times people don't have the finances. That's why I tell people, cost too much to be a criminal. Remember where you're at. This shit ain't, it ain't no joke. You get So now you get in there, you can't pay the bill. The bill is too high. They know your mom ain't got it. A lot of times they can't even mortgage the house because someone was on Section 8. They don't have a house. and it, It's just crazy. So now you in jail, waiting trial. Mm-hmm. You exposed, especially as a young a kid. These these guys was kids. So so much pressure coming their way. They try to offer them a deal. Usually they always come with a deal. And a lot of dudes break and they take the deal because they just they just want to get it over. I want to go home. I want to be. And they don't even know what they're setting up for. Yeah, they and, 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 and mentioned, bro, that they interrogated these kids. For like forty something hours, no food, no food, no nothing. They parents, no, was, nothing. no guardians, no legal guardian. You can't nothing. Do. Parents, some of the parents were scared, and one of the fathers convinced his son to say that he did the crime. So, sold his son out just because they threatened him with taking his job because he was in the joint before. Now, what's so crazy about this is this: what saddened me about this whole experience that I witnessed, guys, that wasn't a part of the criminal and the street element. element they might get caught at one time, or one of their friends might do something. Cause a lot, I've been in jail with a lot of times where it'd be four or five dudes, one homicide or one major crime, and they all on the same case, and they got got them telling on each other. Cause they ain't exposed. They're not regular street people. They're not. They're not a part of the the the, the rules and regulation of the United States of America street code manual. Cause they don't know nothing about that, and they're regular mm-hmm. civilians, but they regular kids, and they might do some dangerous shit one day, right. not knowing what they done. And next thing you know, I'm in the jail with them, and I'm seeing them like they going. They breaking down, but what was so sad about it when I seen them breaking down is that I was so programmed and institutionalized because they was normal human beings and I was detached from the reality of normalness due to the fact that I was programmed by the system to be in jail and taking it like it was just cool and dealing with it like it was just cool. That's my that's the programming I had. So when I see them and they breaking down, they're going through stuff like my man Wise that was in there. He was going through stuff and it, it was so it was so crazy that as i seen him going through stuff i seen many people go through that in prison whereas though they just they just resistant to that they don't they're not going for it they always like this ain't normal ah and then you'll see dudes like me and some of my associates that grew up in a criminal element that we normalize pain we normalize this whole struggle of prison because it was a part of the lifestyle we chose that was normal where we really fucking crazy but i'm in there thinking i'm going insane in order to stay sane because i'm like everything i'm see this is real so when I go ready to go home, I could go back. I could reprogram myself. I got to deprogram myself first to reprogram myself to be able to go out to society because now I'm dealing with real life. But I was in jail looking at this shit like this real life. But when you see a dude like Corey Wise that was going through what he was going through, it was crazy because this dude never did nothing. He didn't do nothing. He wasn't at the party. He just went to go go to the court. I mean, go to the uh, the police district to support his friend. Cause he's like, if I don't go with your mom, gonna kill me. And his life got traumatized. He got beat. All type of stuff happening to him in prison. He and there going crazy, hallucinating all this stuff because this is the effect of a person that's not no criminal. And even if you're a criminal, jail is not normal. But sometimes we've been told in the ghetto that jail is normal, jail is cool, that when you get there, 
you convince yourself that that shit is cool, mm. and that's some crazy shit. Like, think about it. You slept, you, for years and years, I slept inside of a, a bathroom with another man. You sleeping inside a bathroom with another man. For years and years and years, and it's normal. You're going to, you in your cell, you, you living in a cell, all that stuff is normal. You're going out of the shower room, there's 50 people in the shower. Like, that stuff's not normal. But I was able to normalize, and that's what made me, that it, it, it throw you off. So when I seen this, I'm like, whoa. I seen that these DAs that I know, I see how they be in that courtroom. I, I knew the whole process they was going mm -hmm. through. I seen dudes that was good kids that came in there that got statements coerced out of them. Mm -hmm. And I, a, a curse. So it was like, seeing that shit, I was like, damn, I seen the front row seat of this. I seen CEOs that was, you, you, you saying to yourself, damn, this CEO from the hood. This CEO lived two, two, two neighborhoods away from me. But they going above and beyond the code of duty, and they just going somewhere else to impress the white CEOs that they down and they not with us. So they doing all types of crazy shit to you. Mm -hmm. Coming in your cell when you ain't there, taking your property, putting you through this, strip searching you, all, all this over extra stuff to prove to, them, to the system and they think, I'm with y'all, I'm not with them, I'm not one of them. And it's not about me. You Listen, your punishment is your sentence in jail. Mm -hmm. But I'm punished by my sentence to jail, but I'm not. you're not supposed to be in here punishing me. This is my punishment to be taken away from society. But all that extra shit, all that you macing me, all that you, you know, you, you know, when you go to the hole, you got, they be having dog leashes on you. You'll have, you, you'll have a belt around you. You'll have the shackles on your hand, I mean the, the cuffs, and then sometimes they have a leash behind your back walking you to the, to the yard, out of your cell when you're in the hole. So they might have like four or five people walking, they got two leashes, there's two dudes over here, two dudes over there, and they walking Got the whistle names on their on their wrist, the cuffs on their wrist with the belt around them, mm -hmm. and then they take you to a dog cage. Like the, that's your twenty when you in a hole twenty three and one. That's your hour out, dog. And you go right into a dog cage outside, it's just, and it's like a take cage, two men cage. You in there like a dog, like a dog kettle. Right. So it's like the treatment is just on a whole nother level. Right. Me, I'm not. I did what I did. I ain't. I ain't. Uh, you know, I wasn't one of them. I wasn't innocent. I was out here committing crimes. Do I think my sentence was just? No. Do I think, you know, uh, the procedure of, of sentencing me, the procedure of my travel, do I think everything was cool? Was it just? No. Mm -hmm. You got to have a lot of money, man. You need a lot of money to get the, the most powerful representation, man. And let me tell you, all the youngins out there, you got to understand this. When you get locked up, the DA has one job, to get your ass found guilty. If the DA... Could see the paperwork. No, it's not right. No, uh, this story ain't adding up. But you ain't got a mouthpiece to articulate that this story ain't adding up. You're going to jail. You know why? Because the DA ain't trying to lose. Nigga, they had the semen. She's not trying to put they that had on her the record. They had the semen, bro, of the culprit and then just tossed it to the side. Because you know why? The DA... It's not here to lose. This is a business. She's trying to get as many people locked up as possible because you fill the jails up. That make you money. It's making somebody some money somewhere. And, you, and, and the funny thing about the money part, do you know I never bought my I never bought myself or my mom a house? Do you know how many houses I bought? Do you know how many people got houses off of me being incarcerated, out of the homies being incarcerated? Do you know how many people bought houses? I had this one guard, right? Me and him used to go back and forth. His name was Ski. That's mostly all his name, Ski. This dude was an extraordinary dickhead, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a dickhead right along with him because I used to put put my paperwork in. I knew how to. I knew the codes of ethics that they supposed to follow. They're not supposed to curse. You know, they got a codes of ethics that they supposed to follow. I was, so me and this dude used to go back and forth. Just now figured out, like, yeah, whatever. So one day, I'm coming out the yard. This is one of the most painful inter, you know, interactions I've ever had with a guard. So he said, oh, yeah, Peoples, you got some mail. So I, go, I'm coming, I came to the yard, come from the yard, go to my cell, coming back up to the desk. He said, hold up, hold up, look. He, he went inside of his shirt, and they wear like these vests. These like for like knives if somebody stabbed mm -hmm. him. Not like vests on it, but it's like a vest. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, let me show you something. He went inside his shirt, pulled out a little envelope, right? So what's he showing me? Opened the envelope, took a picture. I said, look, check this out, Peoples. I said, what? He put it on the desk. He said, you and the homies got that for me. I said, what? Is him in front of his house with a boat and then like in the driveway in the, in the house with him and his son. He said, y'all bought all that for me. 
that was the most painful shit I ever, I ever experienced mm -hmm. because the reality of the truth that we did. These people be coming there, graduate. All you need is a diploma. They come in there young. They come in there young, and you'll be in prison. And was so was so was so sad about prison. That killed me that day. But was so sad. You see two families in prison. You see the family of the dad and the son that's doing life or doing big numbers together in jail. And then you see the other family, the family of the guard. You had a the grandfather, the son, the grandson, the grandma, the wife. All, sister. all working at the prison. You had seven different family members working at the prison, making a living off of, off of, off of everything, you know, making a living off the homies. And all they did was plug each other in. And they plug each other, nepotism. They plugged each other in, and you sitting there with your family in prison, they in there making money. And one another thing I seen, I never forget this shit. I'm in the visiting room. I used to work out front in Dallas Penitentiary. I used to work at the front gate. So I'm in the front gate, but I'm in the back area. So why you never ran, nigga? No, you, if, when you working out there, you ready to come home. Right? Oh, fuck, wow. I'm going to run for okay. So I'm in the back. <laughs> fuck, I'm going to run all the time. Like so I'm in the back, right? I done cleaned up. I had to mop up and all that. You know what I mean? So I'm in the back. So a Muslim sister come in. She got a little son with him. He running around, energy and all that. I'm sitting in the back. They think I already left and went back to the block, the two guards that was working there. It was a sergeant and a regular guard. So I'm sitting in the back. So you had the kid running around, right? A little baby. He running around. Running around and all that stuff. Oh, she's like, boy, come here. Then. So they get it through, pass it through. They sometimes do the swipe machine with you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your family arrive hundreds of miles to see you, and they can't get in because they might have a wire bra or whatever. But she mm -hmm. cleared it. So the little baby, she said, come tell, tell the baby, come here. So when they buzz the door, pop pop, and she walked out to go to the visiting part. He tell other guy, guess what, man? You know what's so? He said, you know what's crazy? One day my grandson going to be watching him in here. Mm. That was some painful shit. That mm -hmm. was painful. That was some painful shit because the reality is that might be true. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was. I'm in the back. I'm like these motherfuckers mm -hmm. because you be mad, but when you hear certain things, it's like you be mad, but it be truth to it, and it just it cuts so deep, and it's like that's the reality we be going through because if it's, if it's father in here, and it's like you see what I'm saying, it's like more likely who's educating him on the outside. Absolutely, that's just stories from the cell, man. It's just deep. Absolutely. So to all the youngins, just understand. And please, this, the DA's only job. Is to find you guilty. And please watch that watch that series when they see us on Netflix. The DA only job is to find your ass guilty. That's the only job. And she want as least blemishes on her record as possible. If she could lock up a hundred percent of you niggas, she would. He would. Just keep that in mind. Let's go to million dollars worth of games. Me, 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 me. Million dollars worth of game. So this girl hit me up. She says, Gilly, I'm so sad. I really love you and Tootie. I've always been super nice and understanding, but I always get played by my husband. He is so mean, always staring at younger girls. I want to leave, Gilly, but I start putting guilt on myself. You know my mom just passed. I watch you all the time when I'm at work, of course, because he says I'm on your dick. Damn. Why can't we be cool like you and your wife? What should I do, Gilly? I hope you reply back. If you're not too busy, I still love you and Tootie. He's a hater. Yeah, if, number one, he's a hater because um because you decide, you know, to check my million dollars worth of game out and you decide to upgrade your mind in the way you think you got to be on my Dixie. What he's trying to do is he's trying to program you into doing into not getting any knowledge. He wants you to stay in the uh, over here in the dumb lane. Now don't listen to him, cause he going he going he going make you tighten your, your screws. You feel what I'm saying? He gonna make sure that the way you start thinking is on point. So he gonna throw that out there. Get off his dick. You want some nut shit? No. What you're on is you're reading a book that you don't have to physically sit there and read, because I'm putting it in your mind. I'm building it in your mind. So you don't have to physically sit there and read, but I'm giving you so much information through these one-minute videos that once he see that you're applying it in your everyday life, now he's trying to, what you say, deprogram. You got to, he's trying, he trying to reprogram he, you. He's he trying to deprogram you so he can reprogram. To, absolutely. Oh, get off his dick. Stop you, stealing while I'm spilling, too. I'm just saying, that was a good one. It's back, you back to back in the day when I used to write raps for you. Okay, that was a good one. You know what I mean? 
So he's trying to deprogram you to reprogram you and make you think you're on some nut shit. As far as you saying uh, he's staring at younger girls and, well, that's disrespect. Because if, if you're in a relationship with a guy and he's purposely staring at other women while he's with you, that's disrespect. Now, I'm going to be the first to keep it real with you. I don't care if you've been in a relationship for 20 years. When you're not with your woman and you with the homies, you like, God damn, shit. You might not say nothing, but that's what God gave us eyes for, to be able to look. So, and I'm pretty sure you might be out. You might see a nigga that look good. You might not say nothing, but you look over and acknowledge, oh, he's a nice looking guy. You might not say it, but <laughs> that's just what God gave us eyes for. So at the end of the day, you say you put guilt on yourself. Why would you put guilt on yourself about something that has nothing to do with your relationship? Oh, I want to leave him, but my mom died. Your mom passing and you leaving him in a relationship is two separate things. You feel me? See, you're not putting guilt on yourself. You're making excuses. You're holding yourself back from probably, probably prospering and doing something and being something greater in life and getting a man that truly love you and truly want to be there for you because you're addicted to a bum-ass nigga. You're addicted to a nigga who's not willing to build you up when you down. He's not willing to, to respect you like the woman you're supposed to be respected as. But then again, you going for it. And you making up excuses. My mom just died. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Listen, if you're not in a happy relationship, leave. Because unhappy relationships just don't become happy relationships for no reason. So the only way you're going to be in a happy relationship is if you make him step his game up. See, long as he could deprogram you to reprogram you, you ain't going to never be in a happy relationship. But you got to reprogram yourself to believe I ain't going for this shit no more. Uh, you know what? I'm cool. I'm going to step away from this relationship. Now, if he really, truly love you, then he's going to deprogram himself to reprogram himself and come back and treat you like you're supposed to be treated. But you can't ask for that if you're making up excuses for a raggedy nigga. That's the best advice I could give you. A man is only going to do in a relationship what you allow him to do. And if you don't allow him to do that, and if he don't come back and... As the man you want him to be, that he was the man that was meant for you anyway. Because Tootie allow you to be a nut. Absolutely. She allowed me to be me. Oh, well, you, you're admitting that you're a nut then. If that's what, if that's what you want to no, look no, at no, me no, as, no, 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 no where James and Brown was smoking what? When James Brown was smoking turbos. I said I wasn't with, sure with, if they with, was. It with was. Karate Earl, a nigga, an old ass nigga from the hood that wore a gi in the summertime and bought crackhead pussy. And you mad at your woman for waking you up because of that, but I'm the nut. Okay, cool. I'll be the nut. We talking about we talking about James Brown and Karate Earl? Right. Like we talking about two legends. Two niggas that shouldn't even be mentioned in the same sentence together. Why shouldn't he? Why shouldn't he? If you don't understand that, then it ain't, my, it ain't on me to hey, tell you. Hey, this is your marketing right. team. Okay. So, Shorty, if you're tired and you don't want to be in a situation, get out the situation. See, people people don't come for me. A lot of people come for me, come to me for game, and a lot of people come to me for reassurance. You already know what you want to do. You already know you don't want to be, be in that situation. Get out. You know how many motherfuckers is in a situation with somebody, they've been in their the, the relationship for 15 years and they've been unhappy for nine of them fucking years? Well, why is you wasting time? People don't want to start over. People don't, people don't like the fact that they sisters and all them talking about her. Look, she can't keep a man. Look, she she by herself. People don't want to be by themselves. They, they grew up, their mothers was by themselves. They seen their big sisters by themselves. They seen their aunts mm -hmm. by themselves. They old things. I got a man. Mm -hmm. I ain't got no problem. My man love me. Don't matter the if house. the nigga. Going through a bunch of shit. Right. Don't matter if the nigga done packed you out. 
Nigga done fucked you up. Nigga cheating on you. He out here pistol whipping bitches with his dick. And like, it's, like, like it's going out of style. He done, he done, he done, he done fucked up all your goddamn income tax money. Nigga done put, you got a brand new car. You only drove 8,000 miles on that motherfucker, but that bitch say 62,000. That nigga don't even pay for oil changes, tune up, spark plugs, or nothing. That nigga won't even buy your fucking car new windshield wipers. But you cool with that shit. So at the end of the day, stupid is what stupid does. And if you allow the motherfucker to treat you like you stupid and you go for it, then keep acting fucking stupid out here. Then. You know how I many women is in miserable relationships? You know how I many niggas is in relationship with women that fuck love them? They don't even like the bitch no more. But bitch keep the refrigerator full. <laughs> the bitch provides shelter for a nigga. Wave cat Mike. You hear me? Bitch, she give you she you got a car to drive when she at work. So it's 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 a process. And if you tired of going through the same bullshit, then get out. Stand for something. Cause if you don't stand for something, you're gonna fall for anything. Am I right? Ain't that ain't that the saying I believe? Mm-hmm. Go. Stop falling for bullshit. Stand for something. This is million dollars worth of game. I appreciate it. Make sure y'all. Go to M Worth a Game, YouTube, subscribe, 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 subscribe share, share, like, like. Yeah, all we, that stuff. We all appreciate that. the support that we get every single week. Every week, man. And this is me, 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 me. Million dollars worth of game. I'm Gilly the King. I'm Wallow267. And he's just like that. Right! <laughs>